Right, we're back. So now we're going to be having a look at the Gene Stealer cults. Uh, George has unfortunately had to leave. So we're doing this first and this shouldn't take too long, but I know Astro will take a little bit longer. So we will yep. do that probably tomorrow. Well, as, as time of recording, it'd be for Monday. So Gene Stealer cults got, haven't got a lot in this book, which is upsetting. Yeah. They've got um, excluding the name generator, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pages, and the first ones are just the errata about how the ambush markers, brood brothers, and cult ambush works. Stupid. So yeah, they've just got the errata. Um, I'm assuming this is the most up to date errata. So if you are Gene Steeler player, you should get this just to just to double check how the world, the rules work. You can print the roster for free, is the thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't think it's changed since no. uh, the last iteration. No. We've got, obviously, the cult creeds to make your own cult. We've got some stratagems, cult specific psychic powers, and then the name generator. So we won't go over this because that is the most recent up to date errata. But we will go through the cult creeds, and I apologize about the shadow. There's not too much I can do about that because I've had to swap lights. So, Cult Creeds. Same with everything else in the Psychic Awakening. You pick two. Uh, yeah, the only thing that, that's changed is basically you don't get Tank Aces. No, you do not. And Tank Aces being from the Astro Meditarum bit, which we'll go through tomorrow. But yeah, you don't get any of the fun shit from, uh, from the Astro up update, to be honest. Which makes sense, really, because a militia of weird yeah. really going to have Tank Aces. You never know. There might just be one really good gene stealer in there. He's just hanging out. Yeah, I guess. Just piloting a... He's piloting a, sing, sing, a uh, Lehman Russ single-handedly. Because he's got four arms. Yeah, but it's not, not really single-handedly, is it? Well, he's <laughs> just one guy. That's true, yeah. Fuck, oh, puns. Hey. There we go. Right, so... Uh, we'll go through this as quickly as we can. Cult Creeds. So, it's obviously, it's the pick two. Hunter's Instincts. At the end of the first battle round, add one to the advance and charge rolls made with units with this cult creed. So just for first turn, advance and charge. Yeah, pretty good. Innate yeah, fighters. It sucks that it doesn't come out. Um, or is it from the first end of the first turn? or Until the, the end. Until yeah, the end of the sucks that you can't round. do it out of deep strike, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, like the current ones you can. Yeah. It's not, not amazing. Uh, so, Innate Fighter. When resolving an attack made with a uh, by a, with a melee weapon by a model with this cult creed, in a turn in which they charged, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention, reroll a hit roll of one. So, just rerolls if you charge. Kind of nice. Yeah, saves you uh, 10 points on the cult banner. Yeah, but a lot of the time you will probably take the cult banner and straight gene stealers yeah. don't get um, cults anyway. Oh, yeah. But your aberrants do. That does help for aberrants. Not that you're going to feel them anymore, because they cost a stupid amount. Yeah, yeah they cost a bomb now. Thralls Why of the Patriarch. Uh, when a model uh, is taken with this cult creed, half the number of models that flee rounding up. Yeah, not great. <laughs> yeah. Seasoned enforcers. Infantry models with this cult creed do not suffer the penalty for moving and fiery heavy weapons. Nice when you've got a lot of mining lasers. Yeah, you can spam a lot of mining lasers. So yeah, that's good. Yeah, so it it it, may, it gives you more options in terms of your big guns if that you're not taking on vehicles. Uh, so like agile outriders for biker models with this cult creed do not suffer the penalty for moving and firing heavy weapons, and do not suffer the penalty for advancing and firing assault. If you got a lot of bikes, you you're probably okay. Yep. Yeah. It's not uh, good on the uh, the sniper character. That's true. Because he can just zoom well, wherever are... he wants. Yeah, bikes are fairly decent, so. Uh, yeah. Not bad. Armor piercing ammunition. When resolving an attack made with an auto pistol, auto gun, or heavy stubber by a model with this cult creed against the unit that is within half range, the weapon has AP minus one for that attack. That's Fantastic. Quite, that's quite good. That's really nice. Yeah. That... yeah again, the, the neophyte spam. That's really good for that. Yeah, it saves you having to do flamers, but you can get away with doing auto guns, and they're all suddenly minus one. Yeah, that's pretty nice. 
because the amount of shots that come out of you. Uh, let's see. Munitions experts. Add one to the strength characteristic of grenade weapons. Uh, models with this cock greed is equipped with. So your mining charges, plus one, plus one strength. Yep. Sometimes can help. Oh, what's the strength of a mining charge? Like strength six or strength seven? Uh, strength eight, I feel like. I thought it was eight as well. Oh, yeah. so strength eight and you make it strength nine. Suddenly you yep. start bombing knights on threes. It's kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. If you've got a big squad of bikes with um, the stratagems, they can throw five of them. Oh, yeah. yeah so you just, you you just do board. a hit and run. Hit and run with munitions expert. Yeah, you know, big unit of acolytes, yeah. Yeah. Unnatural symbiosis. When a psychic test with it for a cult model uh, with this cult creed is within six of another friendly cult unit, you can reroll all dice rolls of one. Or any or right, all. So, sorry. with that, it sounds really good. Right. But considering you're locked to having one major per detachment, you'd have to spread that across three detachments, so you couldn't just do... A supreme command with three majors and go bam that's gonna go in there and yeah. then i'll use the good ones with the rest of my army so this it sounds yeah. really good but it's not as good as it could be mm. it's 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 a misleading one yeah because if you're taking that you're gonna take it in your entire army basically yeah 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 and then you're missing out on the whole trait for the, the rest of your units mm, that's fair but it is solid so i don't know yeah it's, it, again, it's one of those ones that you'd have to build your entire army around if you wanted to do it. Yeah. But, according to Harita, this one is a golden one. Work has arisen. When resolving an attack made for, with a weapon uh, from the heavy mining weapons list by a model with a top creed, you can reroll the hit roll. That That's very good. nice. That is really good. Yeah. <clears throat> you just stack on blasting charges, heavy mining lasers, rerolling all hits. Especially yeah. if something's already minus one to minus one to hit, so you can re-roll. Um, if it's like okay, you're hitting on fours normally, you're hitting on fives. With that, you can re-roll anything that and turn it into fives. Hope for the best, which is always nice, because it's re-roll yeah. the hit, not re-roll fail. Mm -hmm. uh, it, this does make a make me really sad that the uh, vehicles don't get cult traits. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because really some of these would be so helpful. <laughs> I'm really surprised they don't. Because, like, every other army now... Because, like, Guard especially, all of their vehicles get the get the traits minus super heavies. And mm. one of the he super heavy things you can give it is to make sure it benefits from your uh, your regimental doctrine. Mm -hmm. But all your Lehman Russes, your Tauroxes, everything just gets it. It's, yeah. It's dumb. If you're playing guard, though, mm. they're gonna be in a supreme command detachment. They will get the traits because it's so easy to get supreme command detachment. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is, was, also, how many things are on the heavy mining? I don't know because I don't know how the book. <laughs> vehicle, like, like vehicles, that. vehicles get cult, do they? No, I don't think. They uh, do. I don't believe they do. No. Uh, Harita, can you explain? They might get the cult keyword, but do they get cult creeds? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it'll still be it. Hang on, I got my book. Yeah, I thought Colt Creeds was um, Colt Creeds infantry bikers. Thing. Yeah. Um, except for the Gene Steelers and the Patriarch. I guess it also kind of shows that the, there is a deficit of people playing Gene Steeler cults as well. <laughs> Because I was like, I was thinking when, when this book came out, and I was really tempted by all of the armies. I'm like, oh, I could do Tau. But <laughs> at the same yeah. time, I'm like, I could do Gene Stealer, because Gene Stealer isn't really cool. And then I looked, a lot of the gene, I looked at this, and I'm like, mm, I don't know, not anymore. I mean, they're, they're still good. They're still good, their yeah. Base, but... Their base book's very good, yeah. Yeah. But then I started thinking about it more, and then I saw the Tempest just getting their own... Um, I mean, you can't you can't run ten pesos as an army. I don't think you can now. They, no, that, you that, really yeah, but they can. Be good. You no, really can now. Can. Ten pesos are fantastic now. Yeah. So I think uh, you yeah, probably have Harita to correct mix. himself. Yeah, they only get the keyword brain fart. That's understandable, man. It is. Yeah. It's quite late for you as well. So in, yeah. in Finland, I, I would say that, uh, that you can take them with Astra as a good detachment. I oh, know. Trust me, Ivan. From what I've been, because I uh, Evan's seen the list that I'm gonna build. 
for Tempestus, it's good. Yeah, I mean, you've seen... Uh, I'm sure most people have seen Tabletop Tactics play Tempestus. They, they actually do really good. They did their full Tempestus army with a lot of the stratagems, including the, the Tempestus drop force from Village Vigilus Defiant. You think because they're very limited that they, they don't get a lot of toys, but they really do, especially now, because they get their own regimental doctrine. Mm -hmm. But we'll go over that uh, at, a, at a later point. Devout Worshippers. When a charge roll is made for the cult unit with this cult creed, whilst within three of a friendly cult hybrid metamorphosis, metamorphs unit, sorry, you can re-roll the dice. The cult, uh, this cult creed cannot be selected together with the Hunter's Instinct cult creed. So you can't get the plus one to charge and advance rolls and Devout Worshippers. But just being yeah. able to re-roll the dice for a charge whilst within three of a of a certain character, kind of nice. So, uh, did you say it was the hybrid metamorphs? Yes. Yes, that's a unit. Oh, that's um, a unit. Ah. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're basically acolytes, but they're the... It's like a command squad of acolytes, right? Uh, yeah, uh, kind of. Yeah. Well, it's it's the elite version of acolytes. Yeah, so they've they they basically got like weird... Uh, they're like, they're the, best, best the best from acolytes. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Uh, Haritza has also jumped in for the heavy mining weapons. It is the it's a heavy stubber mining laser and a se seismic cannon would come under. Oh, that's... And then last one, poison blades. When resolving an attack with a bone sword, a lash whip and bone sword, or a cultist knife with a model with this cult creed, an unmodified six roll, you can make an additional attack against the same unit using the same weapon. This attack can then not generate an extra attack. Was it unmodified six? Yes. Okay, yeah. So yeah, you just, get, look, you just get extra hits. Yeah. The, uh... the amount of attacks that you can get with GC that cut, you're going to get a load of extra attacks from that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I just don't think that um, killing us is the problem you're going to get. It's actually getting into your charges. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, but there are, there's a couple of interesting ones here. For example, yeah, Workers Arisen's good. Um, and then taking that with Seasoned Enforcers so that you don't have the. No moving and firing penalty, and then also re-rolling all hits with heavy mining weapons, or heavy weapons. That's just nice. That's a good combo. Um, munitions expert can work if you're doing hit and run tactics. Psychic tech one, eh, again, as Evan explains, not great. And then armor piercing ammo seems pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. So, plus po poison blades can be nice in your back pocket. Gene stealer stratagems. And these are all, again, these are all generic ones. They don't require a, a set us cult. So we'll go through those. Prepared ambush for one CP. Use this stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select one neophyte hybrids unit from your army that was set up using cult ambush. Uh, in this battle round, until the end of that phase, auto guns uh, that, that, uh, in that unit are equipped, have a type characteristic of assault 2. Yeah, so basically, you can deep strike out of range and still get a double tap from the. Um... How useful is that actually? Well, that uh, useful that against with... space marines. Yeah, that mixed yeah. with armor okay. piercing. Because they've well, got... with armor piercing, it's useless. Yeah, because you want to be within half range. Oh anyways, right, so. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is nice though, yeah, because you can, you don't. You don't have to worry about actually getting 12 inches, but sometimes you won't be able to against the full Yeah, yeah in the exactly. circumstance that you're if, like, oh, I'm just at a range, but I need the extra. Or if you're you would, against yeah. Alpha Legion, full stop. Mm. Yeah. That's one thing. Yeah. Uh, Haritas just jumped in. 20 Acolyte hybrids can pump out about 60 attacks with knives and a psychic spell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing Acolytes nice are uh, scary. Very, very nice. They're a tasty unit. Mm. The thing is with Gene Seal Cult as an army, um, is there's a lot of really small, like, they have a lot of, there's a lot of stuff. They have a lot of small upgrades and shit, don't they? Yeah, they're, like yeah. And, like, tactical things. Mm -hmm. They're very, they're very, they're very, they're very I think, it, I think in men's army. Big oh, brain. Oh, definitely. They're gonna have yeah. a big brain. So, Annihilating in Advance for 1 CP. Use this stratagem in your charge phase when a Goliath Rock Grinder unit from your army finishes a charge move. Select one enemy infantry unit within one. Roll a d6 on a 2 plus, they take d3 mortal wounds. Very fun, but I don't know how much play the vehicles actually get outside of the Ridge Runner. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of points for something you're not really going to use. I thought the Ridge Runner wasn't even used. The Ridge Runner's really good now, there's some stratagems that come up later on. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So we'll get to that. Uh, we've got the integrated Vox Net. 
Uh, use the stratagem at the start of your shooting phase. Select one Jackal Alphas model from your army until the end of the phase. Replace the monarch's model's target priority target sighted ability with the following. Vox Contact. At the start of your shooting phase, select one enemy unit within 36 inches and is visible to this model until the end of that phase when resolving an attack made by a friendly cult model against that unit whilst that model is wholly within 18 of this model. Oh. Add one to the hit roll. Not, not wholly. Just normally. Within 18. Yeah. Well, it's just, while it's within 18 inches of this model, add one to the hit roll. An enemy unit can only be selected as the target of this ability or priority target sighted ability once per phase. Very nice. That seems very... Again, Hirito says, yeah, very situational. That does seem very situational, but can... That can kind of very much help that a is unit that kind of wanders right, in. Surely. For 2 CP. That, that's insane, plus one to hit. Yeah, plus one to hit, obviously, but like, it's making sure to set up the fact to make sure it can pull off. And then when it does, it's really good. But it just requires a lot of setup. It's an 18 inch bubble, though. It's huge. Yeah, because it's 36 inches of the of the Alphas. He picks a unit that's that's within 36 of him, but within 18 of something else of that's one of your units. And then they get plus one to hit, shooting yeah. that unit. So it, it it's very much like a battlefield commander pointing things out, which I quite like. Yeah. So um, as uh, Hodista in chat has just said, yeah. So that ability is normally six inch range for infantry. Yeah. Uh, and twelve for bikes. So, so making that eighteen inches up. is pretty. Yeah. That's pretty pretty nice. Close range shootout. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when an a Latin jackal unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of that phase, when resolving an attack made with a pistol or assault weapon by this model against a unit within 12, you can re-roll the wound roll. Pretty decent. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Uh, violence unleashed for 1 CP. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when a hybrid metamorphed unit uh, from your army is chosen to fight with. Until the end of the fight phase, add one to the attack characteristics of this model. Oh, models in that unit. That's good. Just plus one attack is always nice. And if, those, yeah. if they're scary as it is, one CP to give them plus one attack across the board. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, hybrid metamorphs are a bit weird because they're, um, they're elites, but they, you know, they've got the same defensive stat line as acolytes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're paying uh, extra which for special weapons on like every dude, but they're not going to make it in. No, yeah. they like, are, they, are they like chosen and stuff? Yeah, they're basically like, chosen. Why would I pay points for an extra attack when they're not going to get in? Yeah, it's hybrids have three attack, base. Different so they, have four, they get four attacks each, but it depends on if you're willing to pay the cost to do it. Yeah. So, I mean, that they can put a serious amount of hurt on a good wide range of uh, mods, but uh, mm. yeah, they're probably not worth it. I don't know. No, that's fair. There's certain lists that they work in. Yeah. So, moving on. Uh, commanding Amplification. Use this stratagem before the battle. Select one Clamvus model from your army. The range of its Proclamator Hailer abilities increased by three inches. The same That's model cannot really be selected actually. for the stratagem more than once per battle. What That's fantastic. Proclamate? What does Proclamator Hailer thing do? Uh, so it gives bonuses to charges. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's, that is good. That is really good. Plus, for one CP... Three inches is three inches can you can use a lot in three inches, you know. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. Uh, integrated Voxnet is great in that it makes jackal uh, jackals m able to mark targets for vehicles. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's very nice. Because it just needs the cult yeah. keyword. It doesn't get the read, so that means your vehicles will get it too. That's a very good point. Yeah, that's nice. So, very good for the ridge runners. Yeah. Uh, yeah, add one to the hit. It means it ignores your moving and shooting penalty. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The gnarled fist, one CP for use this strategy before the battle, select one abominant unit from your army. That unit's chosen one ability affects friendly cult aberrants units within nine of this of that unit instead of six. Uh so you gain three inches on that and you can only use it once per battle. So if you're committing you... to the aberrant bomb with an abominant, then it just becomes a slightly easier, I guess, but even then you're still playing out the nose. Yeah. yeah, so I think the point of that is that aberrants are really expensive now, so you're going to want to 
take an abominant probably and then buff that abominant. So yeah, I guess if you're for some reason wanting to go a lot of aberrants, you're gonna want to make the most out of them. That's fair, yeah. and it's one CP stratagem, which is quite nice. It's yeah, cheap. I think the the nine inch problem makes it so if he doesn't, yeah, you know, if the aberrants make their charge and he doesn't, yeah, it's a little bit less punishing there. Yeah. So, uh, we've got Raking Fire. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase. Select one Achilles Ridge Runner from your army until the end of that f until the end of the <clears> turn. <throat> when resolving an attack made with a heavy stubber by a model in that unit, add one to the hit and wound rolls. Oh, heavy stubbers again. I mean, <laughs> why do GW love heavy stubbers? They I don't really know. Do. They right. shove them on everything in Agmech, and it pisses me off. Oh, oh I don't God, know why yeah. Call has got such a hard on for heavy stubbers. <laughs> don't call. If it is there. That stratagem, with a unit of three, you're putting out, what, 18 shots? Yeah. That's um, pretty decent. Hitting on three. It, 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 is, it, was, it is. Possibly, possibly we don't have it, but it's still. It's still strength four. Yeah. Still strength four, That's but so... plus one of wounds. Oh, no. Anti fodder in the current meta. Yeah, it's garbage. I know, we're playing D still a cult. If you've not got enough anti <laughs> Lion heavy stubbers. There's something wrong with your list. Mm. That's probably pretty true. But Unless you don't have much range to take. For this, no, so. that's true, yeah. Annoyingly, so it's the only option I can take on a lot of my things, so me <laughs> Sucks. Yeah. And that fucking new Admech flyer is going to have probably have a shit ton of them. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. So many stubbers. The gunship is going to be one big heavy stubber. I uh, know, it's just going to be a heavy <laughs> stubber with wings. And the orcs have heavy stubbers, don't they? Basically. Yeah, every is a heavy stubber. <laughs> That's why they love it so much. Mm -hmm. Right, the cult psyche for one CP. Use the strategy before the battle. Select one cult magus unit from your army. It can attempt. It can attempt to manifest an additional psychic power in your phase. When a psychic test is taken for that unit, add one to the total for each other friendly cult psycho within three to a maximum of plus three. You can use the strategy once per battle. So you you give you basically make it so they become uh, weird boys. Yeah, so I so, actually really like that because plus one to casting, fantastic. I'm off the way, so that's fair. Okay. Thanks for thanks for helping out, Alex. I appreciate it. Yes, appreciate so, yeah, uh, for for every other cult psycho, that's great because they're all going to be sitting quite close to each other anyway. Exactly. Yeah, so you're gonna have you're gonna have like most of your mages together. You might be deep striking one maybe, but yeah, generally they'll be on the board. And then giving them that if if that's the case, you're giving them like plus two to all your powers. Yeah. So it's always nice. 1 CP, slipping through the shadows. Use this stratagem uh, in your movement phase when a Sanctus is chosen to move until the end of that phase. When it advances, add 6 to its movement characteristic until the end of the phase instead of making an advance roll. In addition, until the end of the turn, it can be chosen to charge even if it advanced. Eh. Yeah. Pretty pointless. Yeah, it is pretty pointless. Isn't a Sanctus the sniper? Yeah, you can give him a knife, though. Why would you... Uh, yeah, I was going to say, when would you ever want him to charge? Yeah, um, life's not bad, but yeah, I, the snipers just, are so much better. Violence. Yeah, just yeah. just keep them away. Genetic lineage, uh, one CP. Use the stratagem in your charge phase. Select one acolyte hybrids unit from your army. Until the end of that phase, it can be chosen to charge, even if it advanced. Ah, uh, pretty good. For one Thing CP, is, with acolytes is you're going to be deep striking them most likely, so yeah. they're not going to be advancing. Yeah, I guess. If for some reason you were to, you show them in transport, for example. Eh. Even then, yeah. maybe no. If you it's safe, you like deep striking a big blob and then have another one on the board. Yeah. You know. Distraction fast. Uh, you are restricted maybe. to half your unit starting on the board. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. And if if you're fielding a lot of acolytes, you might end up just foot slogging some of them. Mm. Yeah. That's true. So in yeah. That case, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, cheap, and it's cheap for one CP. It's very cheap. Yeah. Oh yeah. One CP just for advanced charge. Great. Yeah. Plus the twisted helix according to Harisa get plus two to advance. So it they, it can synergize well yeah. with something. Yeah, definitely. Right. Uh, evasive driving. Teams look uh, for use the use the stratagem in the opponent shooting phase when a Goliath rock grinder or Goliath truck from your army is chosen as the target of an attack made by a ranged weapon. Until the end uh, end of that phase, weapons with an AP characteristic of minus one or minus two are treated as having zero. That is nice. Yeah, so that if you really want to deliver precious cargo, that's really good. That is really good. My problem with it is, if I'm shooting a vehicle, 
I'm probably not going to be shooting AP 102. I'll probably be shooting something like a, like a LAS cannon. Yeah. Yeah. So if that... somebody's got some, it really depends on your enemy's anti tank. If they're fielding a stupid amount of auto cannons, say, really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, most but... people won't be. They'll be paying the extra. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also yeah. since it's only on one vehicle, they can just shoot a different vehicle. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, for example, um, you are going up against something that has a lot of missiles. I don't know many missile things that are minus two. Oh no, minus three. They're all like minus one and minus two at most. Yeah. And yeah. then you become a high priority target for some reason. It can help, and it's only one CP. So yeah. Depending yeah. on the depending on the because it's when you're a target, so you've got. It gives you kind of time to ask the question as, "Hey, what AP is this?" If they say minus two, they're like, "Right, I can use it." Otherwise, nah. Yeah, mm -hmm. a smart opponent though. If you had multiple vehicles, they would start on the one you use the stratagem, and then they'd immediately move to the other vehicles for the rest of their weapons. Yeah. So it's it's very baitable, but yeah, I yeah. don't know. It can be very situational again. That's fair. Right, overcharged weaponry for one CP. Use this stratagem in your shooting phase when a cult unit from your army is chosen to shoot with. Until the end of the phase, when resolving an attack with a clearance in incinerator. Heavy mining laser or heavy seismic cannon, fire model in that unit, add one to the wound, wound roll. Right, so that is amazing because if you have that on a unit of uh, ridge runners, yep. they're then plus one to hit and wound. Yes. Yep. If you've got if you've got the, the alpha next to them. Yeah, so you get put the alpha next to it, then plus one to wounds, and just blow something up. Yeah. Yep. So you're then going on to if you don't move. You're hitting in the same as marines. Yeah. And you're most likely wounding vehicles on threes. Twos. Fours and threes. Probably supposed to be twos, yeah. If you're taking mining, heavy mining laser. Mining laser is uh, strength nine, heavy mining laser. Yeah. And most of the so time, you're wounding anything probably on twos, will be. Pretty much. Yeah. I, I can't see a reason to not take the to not take a heavy mining laser. Because when, yeah, when, think... when it goes off, it goes off, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're using that strategy, it's most likely mining laser. Yeah, yeah. Really but giving the option for the seismic ca the, for the seismic cannon is always nice. It just it just spreads if you want to yeah, take. Yeah, it's good for else. the other two, but I don't I don't think they get much playing competitive to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I think with the the heavy mining laser, because you can stick it on a unit of three ridge runners. Um, whereas I think the heavy seismic seismic cannon can only go on the Goliath rock grinder, which is a, a one model unit. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's not so you just get more out of it with uh, Rich Runnels. Yeah, that's fair. Farita adds into play Hive Cult, chip one damage on that, and then use a strat to get another plus one to hit, uh, which means you're hitting on twos, potentially. Yeah, very so, nice. Yeah, that's spicy. And Warlord can uh, gets Captain Aura. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. Right, last stratagem. Uh, I, know, I know this has been a long haul, so I do apologize. Heart of the Creed. Use the stratagem before the battle. Select one cult Primus model from your army when that model is set up on the battlefield. For the first time, it can select one additional enemy unit for the model's meticulous planner ability. You can only use the stratagem once per phase. Or once per once per battle, sorry. Yeah, that's that's really good. That's just nice. It's there's a nice thing of like it's just buffing characters to have to be more utilitarian so you don't have to take loads of them. A bit more flexibility. Yeah, it's nice. Exactly. And then Last thing is the cult psychic powers, uh, and then like a nice fancy name generator. Huh. So the psychic powers, each cult gets one. If you take a custom cult, you don't get shit. Uh, yeah, I find that very strange. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised they didn't have like you can be like a successor of. I would think a gene stealer one would be a successor of something, you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's very strange because how much uh, space marine successors get. Yeah, and we're like, hey, it's a little bit. we're you know. One gene stealer who was birthed from, say, a cult of the four armed emperor, yeah, decides to fuck off and then starts again. They're technically still cult of the four armed emperor, so why yeah. why wouldn't you make Just them a successor? Cult yeah, so so cult pa cult powers, cult of the fault four armed emperor undermine has a warp charge value of eight. If manifested, select one enemy infantry unit within eighteen of the psyker until the start of your next psychic phase. Half the movement characteristic of that model, and half any advance or charge rolls for that model rounding up. That's good. Yeah, so That's just the sheer maneuverability that Gene Stealer Cult have, yeah. reducing your enemies, is really good. Yeah, plus you take that, you have the one that gives plus 
extra bonuses of being nearby the cult psyche for the Makuses. Yep. It makes that Warp Charge 8 less threatening. Because I know some people are like, oh, Warp Charge 8, that's, you know, that could go either way. It's like, well, yeah, but there's still some really good... If you've got ways to make that easier for yourself, it's pretty good. So the Hive Cult with Synaptic Blast, Warp Charge 6. If manifested, select one enemy unit within 18 of and visible to the Psyker. Roll the number of D6 equal to the number number of Hive Cult models within your ar oh from your army within three inches of that unit, and then each wound wo each roll of a six is a mortal wound. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> that seems really shit. Yeah. Because if you've uh, got loads of things within three inches of an enemy unit, it's going to die anyway. Why cast yeah. a psychic power? That is as usual with mortal wounds. Um, yeah, it's just, you're probably better off smiting, to be honest. <laughs> it, 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 it is the number of models. So say, okay, just like hypothetical situation to make this thing, to make this good. Okay, mm -hmm. you surround a vehicle uh, with a acolyte bomb. You got like loads yep. of acolytes, and they have to be within three, so not within well, not within an inch. So if they trail out mm -hmm. a little bit, and you just can't fucking kill that vehicle. And none of your guys die, say you lock a Dreadnought down that can't fight back. Mm. Or even, like, hey, even uh, a Leviathan Dreadnought, if you've locked it into melee combat, it's running probably running dual Storm Cannons. So it doesn't have any AP, so you might make your saves. But you have a lot of things around it. Then this goes off within 18. That's maybe potentially 20 dice to get little wounds. That can be the only situation I think that this would be okay. Even then, on average, you do just like, like three four. point yeah three point one or three point two <laughs> something like that yeah it's bad it is bad. yeah <laughs> it's just bad. Uh, i don't get why they keep putting these these terrible smites in it's like hey do you want smite but not smite here's smite yeah the yeah. only ones that can make it work are thousand suns and gray knights and that's because of the fact that their book was good mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the Bladed Cog, Undying Vigor. Warp Charge 6, select one Bladed Cog unit from your army within 12 of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, when a model in that unit would lose a wound, roll 1d6 on a 5 up, it's not it's not lost. Give something a feel no pain within 12. That's pretty nice. That's so, basically um, the same one that Turner's get. Yeah. Five nothing. Also, Harita points out that the Hive Cult is more of the shooty cult, they don't want to be in melee. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's valid. <laughs> so I guess it's a last stand. Like, oh, I mean, melee, okay, I'll just do some more wounds. Do some exploding. <laughs> it's like it's like if you really, like, electromancy for Admech. You don't want mm. to pick it. It's just there. So you yeah. can, if it goes off, it can be really funny. But that is yeah, it. Yeah. That is the only time. I've used it to kill some of George's Necron characters before. And it was fucking hilarious. <laughs> But that's because yeah. I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't know how this game... I think this game's going to go uh, against me right now. Let's just do this and then it works. It doesn't change mm -hmm. much, but it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Rusted Claw for Inescapable Decay. Warp Charge 6. Select one enemy vehicle within 18 inches and visible to the Psyker. Until the end of that turn, or a resulting attack with a weapon against that unit. Uh, improve the AP characteristic by one for that attack. That's kind of nice. So, uh, the thing with this one is that unless it's been FAQ'd, it's not locked to Rusted Claw units to shoot it. So you could have uh, a Rusted Claw Magus in a Tyranid army mm -hmm. and just go, you know, all the guns have minus one AP on that vehicle. Yeah. Could, yeah I think it's got some legs there. That 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 uh, I can quite, I quite like that I do quite like that I. So you, you can you know you can put it in your uh, shooty hive cult army so your your mining lasers get a little bit more AP or whatever. Yeah, but I mean it I has to be something that's nice. within eighteen, so it's a very specific kind of range. Yeah, but with uh, with cult ambush. That's oh, that's true. Not too much. Yeah. I mean, it's war charge six. It's cheap. You, you may as well take it for the for when it does come up, but yeah. yeah. Right, the Pauper Prince's last gasp. 
Last gap is Warchop 7. If manifested, select one Pauper Prince's unit from your army within 12 of the Psyker. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, when a model in that unit is destroyed, roll 1d6 before removing the model from play. On a 4-up, it can either shoot with one of its ranged weapons as if it were the shooting phase, or make one attack as if with its melee weapon as if it was the fight phase. If so only I Gene Steelers fact... could get the cult. I think, yeah. again, though, I think the fact that it's just one attack, it's not attack again when you die, it's just one attack. Yeah, one attack okay. with yeah, one of its melee weapons. Yeah. Because um... if you if you do it with your ranged weapon, then you get, if say if you've got an auto gun, so that's uh, that would be you need to get two shots for one death. Yeah. Or this one yeah. where it's or, one attack. On a mining laser, really, really good. Oh yeah. But then you know, why would we why would you be taking the mining lasers off until it's like the last couple yeah, yeah. in your in your unit? So it's very situational. Yeah, and with Gene Still Cult you probably have so many units that um you know, it's, you're gonna struggle to pick one unit. Yeah. And the Pauper Princes are a melee cult. Yeah. <laughs> so you're kind of you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot trying to use that. All right, and the last one, the Twisted Helix. Before everything's all done, all done. Mutagenic deviation. Warp charge six. If manifested, select one. Select one enemy infantry unit that is within twelve of the Psyker until the start of your next Psychic phase. When resolving an attack with a melee weapon by a Twisted Helix model from your from your army against that unit, it's plus one to wound. That's pretty nice. So, Warp Charge 6, just giving plus one of wounds, can just be convenient. Yep. Is it, it looks like a lot, of the pi the, a lot of the powers are to make things convenient, but not to make things, like, super good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're little buffs. Yeah, they're very, very small buffs. And then, obviously, we have our Gene Stealer Cult's Ning Generator. Does anyone have uh, 2d6 nearby? Oh, hang on. 2d6? <laughs> yeah, one. I have a single d6. I can roll it twice. All right, so roll roll a d6 first. Uh, two and four. So twenty-four. Your forename is Basque. Right. And your surname, <laughs> if you do it again. Four and five. Basque black. Right. You shouldn't have black. That sounds like yeah. a that's too much surname. power for you. <laughs> Considering what oh, we were yeah. talking about earlier. Oh no, he's gonna say Endrin Riggers all he oh, wants. He's gonna do. He's got. He's got the pass now. He's got the Endrin Rigger. <laughs> Flying dwarves. <laughs> oh, there we no. go. Right, but that is the Gene Stealer Cults. Uh, I will say the art on the back is gorgeous. Like this piece of art here is yeah, great. Is good art. The artwork is nice. There's a couple of interesting stratagems, but the fact that they had to, they had to. They the fact that they feel like they needed to put the errata. And take up this much space for it. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> considering... It's like, considering everything else that was from... Because of the god book. The god stuff that's in this. Mm -hmm. And they had a rata which they put out quite recently. I don't believe this has changed. For a while. That just seems bad. To me, personally. Yeah, it's, um... Uh... It's a little bit strange. Yeah, but then some of the cult creeds can work. Um, the so the stratagems are nice because it gives you a lot of options, and the psychic powers are meh. Yeah. But the creeds themselves, this... is these are these going to f make you? Um, are they going to make you not play any of the other f uh, any of your set cults? Probably not. <sighs> probably not. No, probably not. It's Unless not... you're doing a really specific list in which. Even you then, there's probably other ways to benefit you. Yeah. So, yeah. But that is the Gene Stealers out of the book. Uh, for the greater good. If you are a Gene Stealer player, obviously, you may as well pick it up because it gives you some extra stratagems and some psychic powers you can use. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much the main reason you'd buy this book. Or to just, if you're really, by this point, still unsure about how your fucking thing works, or how, like, <laughs> cult ambush works. How, how your main army rule works. Yeah, I yeah. think you've probably got more problems than, than you're letting on with that. <laughs> it's not a new book. Yeah. yeah. So, overall, what do you guys feel? So I, so I can get your guys' opinions on this before I stop rambling. So, 
Uh, it's it's okay. There's a couple of new options. I don't think it catapults Genius of Cult back up to where they were, but mm. you know, if if you've got a more fluffy list, there's probably you've probably got more ways of making it work. Yeah. Evan? Yeah, so I have a thousand points of Genius of the Cult, and I was thinking about pushing it up to 2,000, and I was just going to base it off the fact of, does Gene Steeler Cult have something really interesting that I want to do in this new uh, Psychic Awakening? Yeah. And honestly, I, it just didn't get my attention. But there mm. are some nice things in there for existing. But I think that the the custom cults, uh, if, if you want to tailor your list be exactly what you want you can but yeah. i feel like you are missing out the specific warlord traits relics and stratagems and now psychic powers so yeah mm-hmm. i think you'd be missing out a bit if you do custom mm-hmm. yeah making making that they can't be successors is weird like with the tower ones in comparison and even the astro militarum ones in comparison you don't need to be a successor with those at all yeah they they are good in their own right so that you can pick something that is outside of those set six, sometimes seven, depending. Mm. Especially with the Tau and you're looking at the Tempestus ones. And even then, you can still take pieces of what's already there. So you can take half of Cadia's one for guard. You can take uh, the greater goods thing, if not the Tau one, but a slightly better one. Mm-hmm. Like, you can still take bits of what you'd want. So, like, oh, they were related to Tau, but they've got this own thing. But with the Creed cults, it seems they just missed a lot of that out. And it's... Well, there's a couple that are, that are from the basic ones, but yeah. yeah. There's not yeah, enough. Just, uh, most cults have bonuses to charging or advancing. Yeah, so... Or you can give it to them another way. Yeah. But overall, uh, that's probably going to end it here. I'd like to thank, uh, well, George, who was here, and Alex, who was here. Uh, for helping me out. Uh, they had to go before we did the gene study bit. I'd also like to thank Evan and Tom for no giving me a hand. Uh, it was nice to have other opinions because I do definitely do not know what I'm talking about, but this conversation has very much helped that. Uh, uh, we will do the Astro Militarum one. Uh, n- probably not tonight, but we'll do that, uh, I'm hoping, tomorrow because that in itself has got quite a lot in it. I'm really excited for Astro. So, yeah, Astro's yeah. fun. Uh, say, uh, if you guys are free tomorrow night, <laughs> And are happy yeah, to go through absolutely. it with me. Yeah. Then we will go through and just gush about why Tempestas are really good right now. Oh, yeah. I love it. And then we'll probably also, at the end of that, have some tactics talks and of things that we're interested in. Oh, just go from there. Have a general nice Warhammer related <laughs> stream. Uh, but Evan, do you have any like socials or anything? I know you said you wanted to... Have you started your Instagram yet? No, I've not started my Instagram yet. I'm going to get some models painted first mm. so I can actually have something to post. I was about to say, if you uh, or if you've got like a Twitch or anything, anything I can plug... No, literally nothing. <laughs> Fair enough, nothing. As well as Tom, anything? Um, well, you could probably follow my uh, Instagram, which is t underscore swain underscore. Uh, I'll stop I was posting say, if, things. Yeah, if you if you post it in the uh, in my Twitch chat and post it there. Yeah, sure. For so George, I'm gonna I... start posting for uh, March from a Crack. So. Oh, nice. Uh, should be very good. Painting. George's yeah. Twitch is Red Camellios, as I just have my, my dinner there, because I've got to move that out the way. So we've got twitch.tv slash Red Camellios for George. As a thank you, go give him a follow while he's trying to get set up on Twitch. Um, modeling stream will be back tomorrow with doing some more... Uh, well, we'll go through this. We'll have a, we'll do some talk over while we do some painting together, probably. Trying to get things done. And also check out my Instagram... Which I still need to link below, but it'll be same Gazable Trades 750. Uh, and you can see my finished Castellan, which I actually went a bit more ham with the modeling and added a really nice scenic base. But you can't really see too much on stream. Uh, but it will be on Instagram, so go have a look on there. Right. Uh, so thanks, guys, for helping me out. And I'll mm-hmm. see you all tomorrow when we go through the, the, the more fun part of the book, I think. I think the bit that we're really excited about will be there. Yeah, absolutely. So, right. Thanks a lot. And, yep, see you all tomorrow starting around 7, as usual. Check the schedule down below.